Food shopping. MP Squire food shopping. Oranges. Mm. Pineapples. MP Squire, I think we are getting too much food. Ah, oh, this is wonderful. I love food shopping. If we bought too many, it would go off. Oh, big cow. Love that. Love my food meat. Love it. Hmm. All right, we finished. I think we finished. So let's stop. But before we do, got to get home. Right, right. There, just wait. Wait a moment. Uh, okay. I called Oli. Could see Oli gonna come us oh. to pick it up. Hello, hop in, everybody. Come okay, on. Okay, let's hop in. We move. We move. Well, I hope you enjoyed our little intro at the supermarket with our characters, MP Squire, Yonghee, and uh, their driver, Gucci Ollie, who picked them up in the van after they've been shopping at the supermarket for their groceries. You go shopping at the supermarket for groceries. So we're back, as you say, English 2, Unit 2, Part 1, with your professor, me. Professor Neil. And my TA, Yonghee. This is TA Yonghee. I just missed that it's a unit three, not unit two. Oh, okay, unit three then. Okay, unit three. So, uh, I'm busy. I have to write down how many uh, stuff I have to buy. But earlier, and Squire, but too many more than I wrote down on the list. Yes. So in this unit, we're looking at the words many, much, and food. Food. Lots of food. And to do that, here in the starter of Unit 3, we have food groups. Here we have the food, bread, chicken, cheese, strawberries, cucumbers, pasta, beans. And if you have the book down the bottom, you will see the food groups. And the first of our food groups is meats. Meats. Yongi, what is meat? Mm, something like uh, beef and... Uh, pork. Yeah, let's ask Google. Or before we have Google, here we've got the image. So yes, it, here at the butchers, the butchers sell meat, as you said, such as beef and ham and sausages, and even the fishmonger. Ah, that's my section. Loving it. Yeah, fish. fish. I love fish. Well, if you're still not too sure what uh, meats are, you can always, as I said, go to Google. And as Yongi's doing on her laptop, they're typing, what, what are meats? What are meats? And Google will give you the answer. Or Wikipedia will give you the answer. Meat is mainly composed of water, protein, ah, and there's fat. too much, too much information. Maybe, maybe. But what it is useful here is what people also ask. What are the different kinds of meat? Ooh. Yes, that is more good information. A lot, a lot of meat. Yeah, so pork, which comes from a pig. We have beef, which comes from the cow. Lamb and mutton, which comes from sheep. Chicken comes from chicken. Turkey comes from turkey. And venison comes from... What is venison? Is it De from a baby cow? No, deer meat. Deer. Oh, deer meat. Yes. Very interesting. So there we go. There's some different I kinds of meat. Down. Yes. Pork is like kind of a sangyeopsal. Sangyeopsal. And the beef is like uh, hanu. Or bulgogi. Bulgogi. Lamb and yanggogi. Mutton is a baby yanggogi. And chicken is kokodak. <laughs> <laughs> and fried chicken. We're yeah. loving it. And turkey is. When do you eat turkey? Christmas or Thanksgiving. Ah, chilmyeonjo. Chilmyeonjo. Venison is. No special occasion. Uh, but, dear, no rugoki. But yes, that is an introduction to meat. Mm -hmm. With a little bit of extra vocabulary and information for you. Because we know there are quite a lot of meat-loving people in Korea. Professor Neil, do you love meat? Yes, I do love meat. Mm -hmm. And the next food group we have is dairy foods. Dairy foods. So once again, if, let's give you an image to assist you with dairy foods. Mm -hmm. So... Right, dairy food, something like milk. Milk and cheese. Cheese. 
and, and yogurt. Yes, yogurt. So if you're still not sure, once again, you pop to Google. Ah, that's so uh, mice. Mice love cheese. I love mice. <laughs> yes, cats love mice. Mice love cheese. Cats love milk. Ah, oh, yeah, I love milk too. Love a little cup of milk. So there we go. What are dairy products? And as Yonghee said, milk, butter, all. Let's get a closer look. Right. What are 10 different dairy products? Milk, butter, cheese, yogurt, cream, heavy cream, sour cream, etc. Ice cream. Yes, ice cream. I love ice cream. Whey. What is whey? Uh, it's a kind of cream. And casein, again, is a kind of cream. So different types of cream. Lots of different types of cream. C cream, ice cream, whey, casein, and so on. Curds and whey. Yes. Sorry. That's <laughs> something very British is whey. Mm. Actually, whey is very popular for people who want to put on body mass. Mm. These days. So weightlifters eat a lot of whey. Gives you a lot of uh, protein. Protein, protein. A lot of protein. Grain foods. Grain food is something like rice. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so here we have some image that we mentioned, and we got all the rice up the top right-hand corner. Pastas and noodles. Are they all made of grain powder? If they're made on grain, so bread comes in. So if it's made from wheat or barley, that is things from grain. If oh, the origin. Rice powder. Yes. If the powder is from grain so we have here Yonghee is not very interested in grains it's not something she I don't eat those things <laughs> yes. I have zero interest however it's part of our food group so we've got barley barley water is very popular in Korea uh, brown rice buckwheat noodles very popular up uh, okay Bulgur, crack wheat, I've never had that. Millet, oh that's around these days. Oatmeal, popcorn, whole wheat bread, pasta, or crackers. Mm. Crack. No, MP Squire loves popcorn. Yes, loves his popcorn. So there you go, you can see it's part of a balanced diet. Food grain foods are part of a balanced diet. Today we have to learn a lot of um, vocabulary. Yes. So Preparation to... is Maybe you already know it, but this is just giving you a little bit of extra information. A lot of writings I have to write down. So lastly, we have fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables. Yongi, what is a fruit? Fruit is something uh, tastes sweet and made of uh, seed. Seeds. Seeds is an important thing. Sometimes, mostly fruits are sweet, but not always. What are vegetables? Vegetables are grown from the um, root. They are parts of the plants you can eat. Mm -hmm. And they include the roots and the leaves. Mm -hmm. So, just, so what is a fruit and vegetable again? Botanically, fruits and vegetables. So here, the important part is fruits contain seeds, while vegetables consist of roots, stems, and leaves. Yeah. So fruits contain seeds. Seeds. Oh, what's this down here? What's this strange sentence down there? Oh, that was the important thing. But what's down the bottom? Is a tomato a fruit? What? 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 Crazy. All right. <laughs> some some people might actually think it's a fruit. They would be crazy. Oh, hang on. But if you go into Google and you type, "Is a tomato a fruit?" It says, "Yes, Google. Yes, a tomato is a fruit." Says it is fruit. Google. Yes, be, wh but why? Because it has a seed in it. Seeds, seeds, it has seeds. But yes, if it's culinary, so people uh, cook it as a vegetable, but it's actually a fruit. Oh, so we cook pineapple, yes. we stir fry pineapple. Yeah, pineapple is a fruit. Yes, so you can cook Because it has seeds. Fruit. Oh, what's this one down there? Is cucumber a fruit? Oi! Oi. Oi. Uh, cucumber has a seeds in it, so technically it is fruit. Oh, look, yeah, Google again. Is a cucumber a fruit? What? This is just getting crazy. Cuc oh, look there. Cucumbers are fruit. Mm. <sighs> I hope I haven't upset some of you at home by introducing you to this Google information. 
I mean, you can always disagree, but then you're just fighting Google. So it says here, what veggies are actually fruits? Oh, this is, as you say, TMI, too much information, too much information. All right, so basically, if you eat something and it has seeds, according to Google and Wikipedia and the internet and so on, it's a fruit. Botanically. 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 Yeah, well, that, that's, <laughs> that's the main idea, botanically. So because of that, foods are categorized into groups. Because of this, there might be disagreements about which foods go into which groups. So, you can disagree with the book. I've got no problem if you disagree. These are my answers based upon what I think. Professor Neil, there's one confusing thing to me. Mm -hmm. So, I can see fish there on the photo. Uh, so, is a fish meat then? Under this category? Yes. It's flesh. It has flesh. It has to be meat. It can't be, it can't be dairy. It can't be grain. It can't be fruit. A fish is not a fruit. Oh. So it can't be vegetable. Ah, that's what we call the uh, crab meat. Meat. Okay. Yes. That's interesting. And I didn't know that. I dairy foods. That. There's only one here. As far as I know. Cheese. Cheese. Yes. And grain foods. We've got a few of those. Bread, pasta, rice. Because they... Origin. Made of grain. Grain. Okay. And fruits. Fruits. Uh, they are uh, beans. Hmm? Beans, not fruit. Sorry. Uh, tomatoes and plums. Watermelon. Oh, beans should have been under. Would be under. Vegetable. Vegetables or grain foods. Beans. Oh, I miss beans. Oh well. Beans is left out. I'm going to leave that for students to decide for themselves by checking Google. Beans, beans are vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it gets suddenly so confusing. <laughs> so fruits there are strawberry. All right, that's probably quite enough for the starter, though. So we're going to be moving on, moving hey, on. TMI, TMI. Yes. A lot of uh, words already. Ooh. So let's go to the dialogue. All right, let's go to the dialogue 2.3. Dialogue. There we go. <laughs> okay. Hi, in the dialogue we have, as usual, two characters who are probably talking on the telephone. And one of them is at the supermarket shopping. Mm -hmm. And so we need to bring in our characters. Mm -hmm. And we need to do a little bit of reading. And you can listen along at home. So first, uh, I'm I'm Beth, and Yonghee is going to be Tom. Okay. All right. So listen along, and we're going to read through it. As you read read along, try to pay attention to the words that appear in square boxes. Hi, Tom. Are you almost home? No, I'm at the supermarket. Oh, can you buy some eggs and cheese? Sure. How many eggs? Um, how much cheese? A dozen eggs and a lot. Oh. Let me just pause this. A dozen eggs and a large brick of cheddar cheese. Okay, do we need any milk? No, we have some milk. We don't need any more. Can you think of anything else? That's all. See you soon. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> oh, Yongi. So, as you know, as we search called here, how many? How much? Because we are talk looking at numbers. Well, not numbers, but words called quantifiers that describe how much or how many of things. So here she says, how many eggs? And Beth says, a dozen eggs. And he says, how much cheese? And she says, a large brick of cheese. There are no numbers here. So what is she talking about? Is she mad? Well, it says, how many eggs do we need? When she wrote, said here, how many eggs, she means how many eggs, he means how many eggs do we need? Because you notice this question has no verb in it, because they've left it out. So it's like, how many eggs do we need? And so she says, we need a dozen eggs. Yonghee, how many eggs is dozen? Twelve. Twelve. 
12. A dozen is 12 eggs. 12 eggs. In, especially England, maybe America, boxes of eggs come in half a dozen, six eggs, or see here it says one dozen, or one dozen, which means 12 eggs. How much cheese do we need? And she says, we need a brick of cheddar cheese. A brick is like a square, looks like a brick that you would use for building your house. It's rectangular, rectangular. And notice with eggs, we say many, and cheese, we say much. That is going to come up in the grammar. Ah, so I've made it blue as well, because... So eggs has an S here, because we can count the eggs. One, two, three, four. But cheese, the idea is we can't count it. We will discuss that in a moment. So how much milk do we need? We don't need any milk. All right, here in the refrigerator, we already have, we already have some milk. So we don't need any more milk. So with words like any a dozen are giving numbers as such. So in this dialogue between Beth and Tom about how many eggs and how much cheese, they are focusing on things like some eggs. And eggs and cheese are nouns and some is a quantifier. And the question how much and how many is looking to, for you to quantify how the number a dozen means 12, and eggs is the noun, and so on. And we're going to look at that now in the grammar section. But before we go to the grammar section, we have some questions for Yonghee about the dialogue. Hmm, interesting. Yes, a bit of a surprise. Are you ready, Yonghee? Yes. Is Tom at home? If not, where is he? He is not at home. He is uh, at the supermarket. Good. What does Beth want Tom to buy her? She wants Tom to buy some eggs and cheese. Oh, very good. Yeah, using some. All right. How many eggs does Beth want? She wants a dozen eggs. How much cheese does Beth want? She wants a large brick of cheddar cheese. Cheddar cheese. And how much milk does Beth want? Mm, she doesn't need any milk. Yeah, so she doesn't want any milk, she doesn't need any milk. Ah, she doesn't want any milk. Mm. Very good, yes, very good, Yongi. So we're moving on. Two fish. Yes, I'll buy you two fish later as a reward. Thank you. Salmon, salmon. So let's go to the grammar focus. Hmm. In the grammar section, we are looking at many things. First, we are looking at nouns. Nouns are words like banana, potato, egg, book, water, juice, rice, soup. Some of these nouns, when they become plural, so over here it mentioned singular and plural. When they're singular, they get a uh before them, a uh, banana. A potato, an egg, a book, because they are countable nouns. You can, single is the you one, can, you can, one item. Yes, yeah, so a banana means one banana. A potato means one potato. Plural means two or more. And with countable nouns, they are countable because when you look at them, they are easy to count. That's the easiest way to count them. Or they have... Um... Uh, firm shape, firm unit Which of it, counting. Yes. For example, water, it changes its shape depending on where you put them. Mm -hmm. So that's why you have to count the container of the water 
but not water itself. Yes. Yeah, so you could say, all right, I have water, but you could also say, as Yonghee said, a, a container. I have a glass of water. Or a bottle of water. Yes. Or a bowl of rice or a bowl of soup. So some nouns are countable, some nouns are uncountable. How do you know? Well, sometimes by looking at the object. If you don't know, you have to look it up in the dictionary and check if the dictionary says if, if the noun is countable or uncountable. Now with quantifiers, quantifiers describe how much or how many of things. And a quantifier like some works with both countable and uncountable nouns. A lot of works. But you just have to notice the here, if there's plural, you have to add the S. And then we have some other quantifiers which work with, uh, like sum, which relates to four, five, six, or seven of an object, or any, which usually is talking about something you don't have. Do you have any eggs? And also, sum refers to something uh, very uh, specific or special you're pointing out but any it doesn't matter as long as it is you know banana any banana is fine yes <laughs> all so, right but if you if you say like some banana they are expecting you to get a bit more selective so we're gonna go through some examples of this now just for you so like Yonghee if you ask the question I'll read the answer hmm. what do you have I have a banana how many bananas do you have? I have one banana. Mm, can right. I have it? So now we've, notice with this one. So notice how it says, how many bananas do you have? Right, Because bananas is countable. So you can't say, how much bananas do you have? You should say, how many bananas do you have? So another example. So again, Yongi, if you ask the question, I'll read the answer. What do you have? I have some bananas. How many bananas do you have? I have three bananas. I have a few bananas. So you can give the exact number. Or here, like it says, a few. A few is anywhere between two to four. A couple, a couple of bananas is two. But a few has no fixed number. Like some has no fixed number. But three has a fixed number number specific number so some and a few don't are not specific they're quite general in their answer look at those bananas go on then Yonghee if you read the question uh, what do you have I have bananas how many bananas do you have I have many bananas oh, can I have some of them yes how many would you like Two-thirds. <laughs> okay. I'm greedy. <laughs> All right, that, that two-thirds of this <sighs> mathematics is about 12 bananas. Here you are, Yonghee. 12 bananas. Thank you, Professor yeah. Neil. So I gave Yonghee many bananas, many bananas. So here we have, you could count them, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18 bananas. But that's a lot of bananas to count. And so quite often we use a word like many, many, or too many, too much, too many. But I don't have too many bananas. All right, and so the other ones we look at are the uncountable. So, Yongi, you're up again. What do you have? I have some water. How much water do you have? I have one bottle of water. So notice how Yonghi mentioned before the container, the container. So I have one bottle of water. So here, this is more specific and more detailed. So another example. What do you have? I have a lot of water. Ooh, how much water do you have? I have lots of water. I have six bottles of water. Ooh, you certainly have a lot of water. Yes, six bottles is very detailed and specific. Notice here, I, I could say I have a lot of water or I have lots of water. They have basically the same meaning. You have the choice. But the point is, with water, we're using much. However, 
you have noticed that we've got sum and any, and there are, can be variations as there were in the dialogue. So here is a, an example of variation using sum in the dialogue. What do you have? I have some bananas and water. How many bananas and water do you have? I have a few bananas and a bottle of water. So, so here, notice I use some. All right, but in the question, Yonghee says, how many bananas and water do you have? If the first one, noun, is uncountable, or sorry, is countable, you use many. If, the if you change it the other way around, how much water and bananas do you have? So it depends which noun comes first as to which quantifier in the question you use. Something to pay attention to. So it's like, how many bananas and water do you have? And as you say, a few bananas and a bottle of water. You could say, I have some bananas and some water. But here, the how many, Yonghi was after more specific information. And the last one, because we're using any, any often comes up using not. You know, so there's a lot of not here. All right. So it's quite a selective one, but it works similar to any. So go on then, Yonghi. What do we have? We have no bananas or water. Really? We don't have any? Really, we don't have any bananas or any water. We need to buy some. So let's go shopping! Mm. Professor, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, when Yonghi asks what do we have, uh, Professor answered we have no bananas or water. Uh, doesn't it all have to be no? Ah, uh, no, nor is an optional one. Okay. All right. But the point is, in this one, when it's negative, you use or. When it's positive, you use and. Mm. Okay, so you could say we don't have any bananas or water. But with any, it should be or. Mm. With some, it should be and. That's really, really good. good point. And good question. So it's time to go shopping. Mm. And we're moving on. Oh, we go shopping now. We're going shopping in the break. Oh, I love shopping. Shopping for food. Grocery shopping. So here we go. Let's take a break and we will see you in part two. See you in part two. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>